Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Before we jump into the story, I think it's relevant to mention that I am a black woman who is from the US. I live here, this is my home, and I quote unquote took the red pill last year in 2020. And it's been a journey, but that is a story for a different time. I have been so disturbed by wokeness and this ideology. It is super divisive. It doesn't really help anybody, and it's all about power and control, in my opinion. So here I am complaining about it on the internet. So today's story, you know, this story went viral earlier this week. It is about a psychiatrist named Dr. Aruna Kilanani. In April of 2020, she gave a lecture at Yale called The Psychopathic Problem of the White Mind. Guys, can we just pause there for a second because... People would freak out about the name of this lecture if it were any other race. But because it is about white people, yeah, this somehow makes it okay. All right. So before we go into exactly what she said, I want to give you all a bit of background about what this lecture is actually about. So I pulled this flyer right off of Yale School of Medicine's event page. And as you can see here, the psychopathic problem of the white mind blah, blah, blah. Let's scroll down here to the target audience, learning objectives, and needs assessment. So target audience, trainees in child psychiatry, psychology, and social work, faculty, clinicians, scientists. The learning objectives. At the conclusion of this activity, participants will be able to set up white people's absence of empathy towards black rage as a problem, understand how racism is part of the mind that white mind that arose during colonialism with a series of lies around violence. Number three, understand how white people are psychologically dependent on black rage. I have several problems with this. Number one, Kalanani is not a black woman. So what do you even know about black rage, Miss Aruna? For black people who are experiencing black rage, particularly towards white people, a lot of this has been brought on because of the lies from the news and social media that cherry pick stories that always depict white people as the aggressors and racist and people of color as the victims. And they do this to manufacture outrage so they get likes and clicks and money, guys. It is always just about money and ratings. Now listen, of course there are problems within the black community, but making it seem like it's the white man's fault is absolutely ridiculous and strips away any type of autonomy and self-determination that a black person and people of color have. And this is honestly my biggest problem with critical race theory is that it just completely absolves people of any type of autonomy and self-determination. Anyway, let's go into what she actually said. So some of, so mind you guys, the, the audio, the interview, I'm sorry, the presentation itself was about 50 minutes. And I think we just got clips of it, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it was leaked to Barry Wise. So she says here, and now this is from Aruna's presentation. She says here, white, the white people are out of their minds and sound demented. When addressing issues such as race, goes on to say, this is the cost of talking to white people at all. The cost of your own life as they suck you dry. Oh my God, that is such an exaggeration. <laughs> she goes on to say, there are no good apples out there. White people make my blood boil. Around five years ago, I took some actions. I systematically white ghosted most of my white friends. I have less than 1% left. It was also a public service. Guys, I don't even, like, I just, I can't believe this. And then again, she was on to say, I had fantasies of unloading a weapon into the head of any white per Like, guys, I don't think I can even say this kind of stuff. Okay, this is, you can read it here on the screen. Okay, but this is, this is awful. I don't care who you are. You don't talk about people like this. You know, I know these are just words, but to me, this is literally inciting violence. And I read this and I see that this is someone who has really deep-seated hatred towards white people and needs to seek help. You know, this, this is clearly a woman who is not well and is projecting her own personal issues into her work. 
okay? So after this video went viral a couple days ago, Aruna had a lot of backlash, and rightly so. She got a lot of comments on her social medias, and, you know, and some of the comments were nastier than others. A lot of folks were just saying things like, how could you say this? This is racist. You know, you need to seek help. Like, how can you be a professional and say things like this? But then some of the other ones were nastier, guys. Like, some of them were pretty racialized. And listen, I am not an eye for an eye kind of person. She said a lot of hateful things, and so I understand why people felt the need to attack in that way, but I don't think it's helpful to say hateful things. That's not going to convince her that her ideas are wrong. It probably only fuels her deluded perceptions even further. And additionally, there were a lot of comments left on her page by people of color, actually. And I actually left a comment on her page as well, and she deleted my comment and blocked me. <laughs> and but the funny thing is that I didn't even say anything hateful. If I remember correctly, I said something along the lines of, I'm, I'm a black person. I don't agree with this type of rhetoric. To me, you're just spewing the racism that you claim to be fighting against and that maybe you should, you know, talk to someone to help you through the feelings that you're having because this is not particularly normal. All right. And. And also, too, I was able to log into my other Instagram account and kind of look at the comments, and it seems that she deleted a lot of comments from other people of color. People would go back and comment again saying, hey, you deleted my comment, and I'm a person of color, and I don't I like this. And so to me, it's interesting that she kept up a lot of the hateful comments coming from white people, but decided to delete the comments coming from black people or, you know, whatever, people of color, because it defeats her narrative. She can't have brown and black people going against what she's saying when that's who she's fighting for. But anyway, you know, again, she received a lot of hate for this, guys. And even on Yale's event page, made it clear that they are not associated with her in any way. You know, they go on, here we go, you know, statement from YSM on April 6th, a speaker who was not affiliated with Yale gave a child study, da 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 da. So clearly, Yale has seen the backlash and they're trying to distance themselves from what she said because what she said is pretty heinous, guys. The last thing I want to share here, guys, is this Instagram press release that she posted on her Instagram page. I'm not going to read over all of it. It is three, three pictures, but I'm going to just kind of read a little bit about it. So here we go in the second paragraph. When we, BIPOC people, get angry, they, white people, use our responses as confirmation that we're crazy or have emotional problems. I spoke metaphorically about destruction and creation, around having a new kind of conversation, capturing the difficulty of speaking about race. So again, I know that this was a 50-minute lecture. We only got a little bit of it. But from what I saw and what the snippets that we heard, to me, it was just straight up hate. And I'm not about that. The last paragraph, here we go. If you want to do real work on race, you need to access negative feelings in the unconscious. You need to feel negative feelings. I was normalizing negative feelings because when you don't, it will turn into a violent action, like the threats on my life and my loved ones since Friday. I mean, I think that kind of speaks for itself. I'm sure she did get a ton of death threats because that is just kind of what happens when things like this go viral, people respond. And I mean, she kind of technically threatened people herself. So, you know, it, it makes sense that this is how it went. I don't condone that either. I don't condone any type of violence at all. But it's just, it's just really ironic, is all. And then the last page here, I want to point this out. <sighs> My style of language is different and expressive, with fluidity between conscious and unconscious. Time and uses masala, exaggeration, for punch and comedy. It's why we love Richard Pryor, telenovela forms, and rap. It's never a good time to talk about race. This is a conversation we should have had years ago. My work is important, and I stand by it. We need to heal in this country. All right, guys. So she stands by what she said. She stands by her work. She feels, that, she feels that it is important, and a lot of these woke people do, right? Like, they are just really invested in this. And I think a lot of the comments that she got 
kind of maybe further validated that for her in a way, seeing how angry a lot of people were and particularly like seeing how angry white people were. But it's just, to me, it's just so ironic talking about this in a sense that like we need to heal this country when the things that she was saying were just so negative, you know? And another thing too, she says like, we need to talk about race, but what about it? What specifically are you trying to solve? What do you want? You know, what about race do you want people to understand? And since you hate white people so much, why do you even care what they think? Because I think something that I realized a lot ever since I, you know, left the left, so to speak, and I think something that a lot of woke people don't realize is that we are never going to have this perfect kumbaya world where everything is perfect and we all love each other and see eye to eye. You know, I think most people in today's society are good people. I really believe that. But there will always be someone who is a racist or won't respect you as much because you're a woman, as awful as it sounds. But that's just human nature, okay? That's life. And when we see instances like that, when we see instances of those bad behavior, we should call it out. And thankfully, we have reached a point in our society here in the U.S. where those hateful individuals cannot stop you from succeeding in having a good life because of the people who came before us to fight for us to have these opportunities. Look, I am not saying that the U.S. is perfect, that our society is perfect, but this woke stuff is not trying to fix anything. It's actually tearing the country apart. This wokeness ideology is taking us backwards because it lacks nuance. There is no forgiveness or grace. There is no such thing as changing and becoming a better person. The ideology overgeneralizes and stereotypes groups of people. It's hateful, self-righteous, entitled, and destroys anyone who dares to question the narrative. You do not have a say in who you are. They say who you are. And you are who you are based on your skin color and your gender and your sexual orientation. Who you are and your interests don't really matter. What's most important about you is your physical characteristics, which are your skin color, your gender, like those kinds of things. This is how people who are part of the woke left think. This is what they think of you. They reduce everybody to their gender, to their race, And they think that they know all about you and all about your life because of the skin color that you have. And they think they know all about your experiences because of your skin color or your gender. This is the biggest problem that I have with critical theory and critical race theory, critical gender theory, just critical theory in general, is that it's not, it's just, it's divisive. And it's such a lazy way of thinking about the world and doesn't actually get to know the real causes of things. You know, they just assume that because of your skin color or your gender, you have this type of experience. And it's just such a problematic way of operating in the world. And also, I think that this type of mentality is so detrimental to people's psyche, especially young people, particularly people of color. You know, can you just imagine having this stuff thrown at you as a kid and being a white kid thinking that you're inherently evil And being a black kid and thinking that, my God, I'm so oppressed and there's nothing I can do about my life. This is not empowering for anybody, okay? And I don't know, guys. This this video is not really meant to be a hate video towards Dr. Aruna. I don't know this woman, right? Like, I've never met her. Really, my biggest takeaway from this particular story is just this is what wokeness ideology causes. It makes people crazy and hateful and say ridiculous things and believe that a group of people are a certain way when that's not the reality at all. And I think it's a big problem and it's destroying our society. It is dividing us further apart. And my biggest problem with this is that there is no room for healthy, thoughtful debates with woke people because it is low-key a cult. So it's just even hard to have these conversations about how we can bring the country together. I don't know. It's just, it's not a shared vision of what the world is. There is no uniting factor right now. And that is 
what really is causing a lot of the destruction, in my opinion, or one of the factors at least. So that's what I got for you guys with this video. Let me know your thoughts, you know, what you think about the situation. And if you enjoyed this content and found it interesting, please hit the thumbs up, share it with people in your circle, and I will see you in the next one.